All right, welcome, welcome, you lovely ladies and gents, to MCC15 The Show. I'm Lucky, and joining me is Lucario. Hello, everyone. We'll be the music to your ears as we take you through this competitively uncompetitive block game tournament from start to finish. All right, and here are the teams. Here's the Red Rabbits. Here's the Orange Ocelots. The Yellow Yaks. The Lime Llamas. How about those Green Guardians? Or the Cyan Creepers. Don't forget the Aqua Axolotls. Up next is the Blue Bats. Purple Pandas. Last but certainly not least, the Pink Parrots. All right, let's see what game starts off this MCC at the Decision Dome. All right, it's time for the Decision Dome, the best part of MCC. And the games that are gonna be shuffled on the first wheel today are, people hate this more than Monopoly, the game, Hide and Go Seek, Crossbow Go Blur, To Good To Do Us A Waff, Sky Wars, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, Filz's Memory Test, and Glitch Simulator. All right, time to vote. Let's have a look at what's gonna happen now as the people throw their chickens into the big mystical wheel. No one seems to be throwing just yet. Oh wait, no, there goes Crinios and his chicken misses entirely. Fantastic. Everybody seems to be waiting as long as they can so the chickens don't wander around and go into a game that they are trying to avoid. You know, glad there are no roads nearby for the chickens to cross. Uh, here we go, a few chickens are starting to fly in now. Oh, many, many chickens. It's looking like one heck of a barbecue with all these chickens. And I'm not gonna lie, it's, uh, it's, it's making me hungry. Uh, there are no power-ups yet, as it's the first decision dome, so it's gonna be entirely RNG. Now, the chickens are being countered. It seems to be close between Parkour Tag, Buildmark, and Sky Battle. Three very different games. The teams have their own strategies. And the first game gonna be played is... Parkour Tag. All right then, let's head on over. All right, and we're off with Parkour Tag. Round one, we got the Red Rabbits versus the Orange Ocelots. They are both top contend contenders, sorry, today for the event. What do you think, Lucario? Absolutely, these are top contenders. Dream and Sapnap are such a scary duo in this team. They're both top players in this game. And then the other team, Orange, with Pizza Hut, one of the best players in the event overall. This is absolutely going to be a good match to watch. All right, we got Michael McChill. He's off hunting for the Red Rabbits in their first round. Well, I guess that would mean the runners are going to be Dream, Sap, Nap, and Quackity. Hope they can hold up. Here goes Michael jumping from obstacle to obstacle as he hunts down those orange ocelots like it's uh, like it's the wild. It's the predator and the prey, I'm not going to lie. Rolls are kind of flipped there, aren't they? The rabbit hunting the ocelot? <laughs> Rabbits are quite vicious creatures, man. I'm not going to lie. Well, the rabbit did pretty well to get Pearlescent Moon first. So let's take a look at how Sapnap's running is. Yeah, Sapnap's quite the parkour expert. He's usually running after Dream in Manhunt. I'm not going to lie, he's probably the best on their team. So if anyone's going to be able to... Uh... Actually, never mind, I've got that backwards. He's he's evading. Wow. Well, my bad, that's, that's a quick mistake. And look at that, he survived. Maybe he should be the one who's running in Manhunt. Here we go for round two. We're starting off with Smallish Beans from the Blue Bats. Boom! Insta tag on Wisp. Successfully uses a piston jump to go after um, Scott's major next. Oh, he's been juked though. Scott's going the other way, but that's not going to slow Smallish down as he's running across. And he's take he's cutting corners to catch up. It looks like he's going to run alongside and a sneaky jump and tag. Newcomer Ant Frost surviving the longest on his team, but Joel is hot in pursuit. We don't know how long this will last as Ant Frost does try to get away, but goes up a ladder, letting Joel catch him. Oh, he got caught there. Now let's take it over to Mr. Rusty himself, who has been evading for the Blue Bats. He's watching his teammate run. Oh, and just like that, the time is about to run out. Look at that. Boom. Too easy for Preston. Too easy. Blue Bats look to be very strong in this parkour tag. All right, next up we got the Pink Parrots. Tapple hunting down the Green Gar Guardians, who are undefeated at this point. So let's see if Tapple can take down this losing streak right away. He already got Filza. Oh, the old Boomer Man. Thank God this isn't hardcore, because Filza would... He's not used to dying like that. Oh, there we go. He's just got Connor as well. He is moving around the map at lightning pace. It's kind of funny how, uh, I think it was Connor is the one wearing a Sonic skin, because Tapple is moving too fast. He's just gotten them all. And so fast that we've already jumped over now to the Cyan Creepers, who are being chased down by Grian. This team, we did not expect them to do too well due to having two newcomers, but they did very well for themselves, having all three players survive that round. 
All right, here we go. Round four. We're following Captain Sparkles, the legend himself on the Yellow Yaks. He'll be hunting down the Lime Llamas. There we go. He's off to a quick start. Few jumps in succession and immediately gets Kara Corvus, his former Crimson Kraken's teammate. Oh, and disaster strikes. He hits a wall and falls down. There's one thing we know about Captain Sparkles is he's known for his perseverance. He is determined to get solidarity. He has not given up this chase. He's going across the entire map. Yep, here he goes. He's not going to give up. That is just not in his blood. It is nature. And there he goes. Gets the tag on Solidarity. Who's just left? Oh, it's Fruit Berries. Oh, uh, yes. One of the green gods of MCC. It's going to be a hard chase. But it looks like he might be able to cut him off here. He does, and he gets the tag, securing his team the win. Using those little head hitters as well. Now switching it over to Puns, who's on the same team but on the run. And he'll be running from Orion Sound. The clock is ticking down, as you can see on the right side. Yellow Yaks in fourth place. They're above Lime, but getting this points will do really well for them. We're running out of time. Three seconds left. Here he goes. Oh, he seemed so safe in that hiding spot. The last second he got caught. All right, here we go. Round five. We are watching Filza from the Green Guardians. My man, as he hunts down those evil, evil blues who are in first place. Let's see how well he can do it. Oh, not off to a fantastic start as he has fallen, but he recovers and manages to get f whip. His next target is the other Minecraft OG, Preston, known for his parkour skill. He's been doing really well in this event so far. His team's actually undefeated, but Phil seems like he's catching up to him. Probably be able to get a good tag off of him. Yeah, Green's hungry. They want that first place title, and he takes Preston out. He's got one more to go. He's hunting down, he's hunting down. Here he goes. He's coming across. Climbs down the ladder, drops 180, and takes out Quig. To get them all in 37 seconds. Now we got Fundy the Fox. The Fox is doing a great job of running away from the Predator because Fundy is about to survive the round against Blue. This is really going to be a big hit for them in the standings. Oh, can he do it? Can he do it? He's got two seconds left. There we go. And just like that, that is the first loss that Blue has gotten today, pushing Green up to first place. Now, why don't we take a look at those standings? So as we said, this ended Blue's undefeated streak up to this point. It dropped them all the way down to third place, below Yellow in second place and Green in first place. Round six, Lucario, we got an exciting matchup here. We got the Pink Parrots in fourth place versus the Lime Llamas, and they both seem to be putting up their strongest hunters with Tapple and Fruit Berries. It's going to be an absolutely insane match. These are some of the strongest movement players in the entire event. So for all we know, this could be a 20-second hunt for either team. It could go either way and Tapple is off it looks like he's off to a much better start as he's really close to his first hunt and he gets it on Ollie. Boom! Look at that, he's taking out Orion Sound, he's running, there you go. Fruit gets Tubbo, oh no, the Tubster, the Beeman's down! But Tapple is not, not distracted by that, he is moving, he is ready to go, he's already got one down, he's got two more to go, here he goes, his second one, Kara Corvus down. Fruit not letting up. He's in relentless pursuit of Rambu right now. And he cuts him off and gets it. The scores are even right now, but Tapple is very close to Solidarity, and he gets the final tag to secure the win for his team. But Fruit's not going to be too far behind as he takes out Wilbur and finishes for his team. Okay, round seven. We're back with Filzer on the Green Guardians. Is he hunting again? He's on that hunt for those pesky yellow yaks to get them all down. He's chasing CPK. Drops down from the skies like some sort of Assassin's Creed maneuver and takes out CPK. Up next, he's got to hunt down Captain Sparkles and Puns, both very speedy boys, but they're hiding in one spot. If Phil can make this jump, oh, he fell. But it ba did bait down Captain Sparkles, and he does get a tag on him. Now, he just has to chase down Puns for the win, but we all know that Puns is equipped with a, a great pair of Air Jordans with some great running shoes as he evades and he runs... Jukin left side to side, through a door, around the corner. Phil's chasing, though. He may be an old man, but he's not quite done yet. He's ready to cut, cut him off. He goes. Oh, he's getting close, and he does it. A very nice play from Phil's in Minecraft. So let's see how his teammates are doing. We see Connor eats pants, the Sonic running away from Jack Manifold. Oh, he's just sitting across the map from Jack Manifold, just watching him as the time runs out, and he earns his team a survivor bonus. Well done. Here we go, round eight. We're back with the blue bats, and their hunter is the absolute Chad Quig. As he's, he's off, he's moving quickly. He's surveying the scene, and he's jumping across those platforms. Boom, takes out Solidarity. Lime Llama's a pretty scary team with fruit berries on it, so it's probably going to take him a while to catch fruit. 
but it does not seem like that's his target as he is going for Kara Corvus instead and he catches catches up to her and gets the tag on her so it's just fruit left let's see how well he does he should he should be able to get this because uh blue bats have not actually lost a round since we last saw them that's one loss so far and they've won every other round let's see how he goes is he going to catch up to the the green machine who's a flying it is scene that made sense it is pretty close that both teams have one survivor but quick gets the hunt on the fruit. absolute chad here we go, final round, it's round nine. We're finally seeing some action from Pizza Hut, not to be confused with Jabba the Hut from the Orange Ocelots, who, I'm not gonna lie, it's looking pretty bad for them. They're in last place, but hopefully Pete can earn some points for his team as he's quite the fast mover. And if anyone can do it, it is Pete. Yep, as you said, he is one of the best players in the event as he's already tagged Ollie and he's wasting no time just going straight for his next target, Kara Corvus. Here he goes, he gets a boom, flying snipe as he's heading down to the ground, but he doesn't even have time to acknowledge it. He's off and he's moving for that third and final target, and boom, it's over. Look at that. Solidarity, been tagged. No one works as well as him. This man is absolutely insane. And the other hunter, Fruitberry, is also an equally talented parkour player. I guess he just doesn't go as fast as Pizza Hut. Let's see what he does here. Oh, you know, I gotta take back what I just said. When no one does it as well as Pete, if anyone can, it's gotta be fruit. He is a mechanical machine. The way he moves, it's not human. I'm convinced he's being pl this account is being played by a robot. Because look at him as he's tracking down. Who is this? Who's he tracking down here? Boom, pearlescent moon tagged. She did a good job evading up to that point. But fruit wasting no time as well, going after his next target. And he gets shovel, leaving only green left. All right, can he do it? This is the final round. He just wants to get it quickly as possible. He's going up, he's going down, and a cheeky little tag there through the floor. And would you take a look at that? Blue has outpaced everyone to earn three plays in the top five and finish game one in first place. They should be called up on charges of tags evasion. Green and red also had strong openings, coming in second and third. We should also note that Aqua and Orange, who were both predicted to excel at parkour, ended with very low placements. All right, now off to the Decision Dome. All right, voting begins in the second Decision Dome. Immediately, the Purple Pandas are gonna slam dunk over there, the Red Rabbits, Dream and Sapnap, the Power Team, taken out. We're not gonna give them a say. They don't deserve a say. They'll win no matter what, so they don't get a vote. That's fine. Other people, look at that, he gets owned in the chat. There is some, there is some savagery coming through there. Chickens are starting to fly in. Green has spawned a Mega Chicken. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he built a mega chicken, but in come the pink parrots, cooking up all those chickens, making it real tasty, maybe had a bit of seasoning there, that was Rambu who did that, Fundy's not very happy, but he's, he's leaving that, oh look at that, Rambu's leaving some hee hees and chants, it's very funny, but not many chickens are left behind, so they're counting it up, but you know what, it doesn't really look like it's gonna matter, because the mega chicken is with the rest of the chickens in Battle Box, and it looks like it's pretty clear that Battle Box will be the game we're playing, alright, let's take it on over. All right, here we go. Round one, we're starting with Kratzy of the Aqua Oxalotls as they're facing off against the Pink Parrots. They're going to be both interesting team to watch. I know that Pink is a pretty strong team, but Kratzy can still pull off some sort of trick as he starts firing bows down on Tapple and Tabo. Kratzy showing he is one of the strongest battle box players. He's been on some of the scariest teams as he bows down Tabo. That was like 500 blocks away, what a shot. And he takes Tapple too. That's a double kill already with the bow, Mr. Katniss Legolas Everdeen. Look at him go, he's shooting down now on the last two remaining pink. Can he take out Wilbur? I think he's gonna, he does. He's at two hearts, but he does not let up and he gets the ace for the round. Oh boy, takes out all of them and now he's putting in the wall. Illumina, Mr. Speedrunner himself, is very fast to the potion and gets some very fast hits onto the orange team. As well as killing them, he is speedrunning these kills right here. And last one on their team. Alright, orange is gone. Okay, here we go with round two. We're starting off with Sapnap on the Red Rabbits. And it looks like he's gonna, oh, he's gonna be taking the flank because he's got those depth strider boots. He's practicing his Olympic swimming as he's gonna come up behind the enemy team, the opposition, if you will. And boom, just chops down false symmetry like that. Red team doing a very good job of keeping purple away from the wool. Ren and Illumina not able to find a way in, but Dream does get shot. Oh, there was a, there was a fight there from Quackity. But here we go, we got Sapnap going up. Oh no, he was taken down by Illumina, but here comes Quackity. 
His PvP arc has begun. He's taking on Illumina. Here he goes, over under the bridge. Finish him off. Finish him! Boom! There goes Quackity. Time to put in the wall and win the round for his team. And then we'll head over to the Cyan Creepers and see how they do. Don't panic. Build in. Your shears break them. Okay, okay, that was close. Oh, Quack, my fucking way to fill it up. Alright, let's see how Cyan does. They're not expected to do very well. As they do have two newbies. Scott charging right away into a fight with the captain, who goes down immediately to Wisp. And CPK is chasing, but that's been he's been taken out by Anfrost, the newbie. Down goes five ups, but they get one back and take out Jack Manifold. That was Smajor. Now he's engaging with Puns. Puns a great PvP here, but can he hold his own? It doesn't look like it, but he Scott dies, but he still left uh, he left Puns with two HP there. Boom, taken out by Wisp. Up next, we have the Red Rabbits versus the Cyan Creepers. Both teams have had a perfect game thus far. Let's see which of the two Titans can topple each other. I mean, Red's pretty strong, and they're firing down some shots, though. Oh, Satnap and Quackity taking down a corner order themselves. But down goes Michael to the new player, Antfrost. But they get back one, with five ups being taken down by Quackity. Go into a battle. Smajor's been taken down. Oh, and it looks like a Red Dominance. Quackity goes in, kills Antfrost, and then Satnap goes down and chases Wisp to get a full kill on Cyan. Let's take a look at the other match, Aqua versus Purple. Alright, here we go, Mr. Mr. Kratzy, he's racing through. Illumina wants that potion, he's got it, but it doesn't matter. Down, Sylvie takes care of him, followed by Ren the dog, but more like Ren the dead, he's gone too. Aqua getting some very fast kills on them, you can see they just swarmed False Symmetry. Martin, the only one left alive, he has the knockback sword, so he's fending him off, but he falls into the canal. It's only a matter of time at this point. Look at this water battle go. It's like synchronized sim swimming, more like synchronized murder or something, but they take care of them all. Up next, we have Red versus Aqua. Both teams have had a flawless run-up to this point, but it will end for one of them. Let's see who it is. Oh, okay, we're seeing some shots fired. We can see both perspectives of Kratzy and Dream. Oh, down goes Kratzy. And we switch over now to... Oh, we see Dream fighting in the canal against Crinios. Oh, what a shot from them. Red appears to be the dominant PvP team here, getting all four kills against Aqua, securing the round. They've had a perfect run so far. Let's take a look at how Pink's doing. Yeah, we got Pink. Pink's going to be doing a dominant force, and they're up against Yellow, who honestly have had... Uh, they're struggling, I'm not going to lie. They're, they're having a hard time in Battle Box. Uh, I don't think they've actually won a round just yet, but uh, yeah, I mean, we can hope they can do well against Pink, but just look at the way that Pink is moving as a unit. They're fighting strong, and it, there goes Puns. It, Pink is just too strong. Captain Sparkles goes in, but he just gets absolutely overwhelmed uh, by Pink. Yellow looks like a strong battle box team, but it's just not going well for them. The Pink Parrots, here they go. They want to continue their streak. They're being a dominant team. They're in second place, and they're up against Cyan, who's in third. But just if you look at the, the members of their team, man, Pink is just stacked. They should be able to take this quite easily. I believe so. They're firing shots down. Down. They just took out five ups and Smajor at the same time. I mean, Cyan has been doing quite well for itself, though. It's in fourth place overall at the moment. But Pink does oh, seem to be oh, out beating them. Oh, look at that. They took out two of their members and got the wool in before Tubbo could get there. Up next, we have the Red Rabbits versus the Green Guardians. Red Rabbits looking to continue their flawless streak up against the Green Guardians, who had been kind of underperforming up to this point, not doing very well. And is that Tarzan or Phil's a Minecraft? As he's hiding out in a tree, shooting a bow and arrow, but he's been snuck up on by by Satnap, but gets obliterated by Philza. What a kill! And look at that. There's just Quackity left, and he just he can't stand on his own. As Green finally ends the streak of the Red Rabbits and get a win. And now we have the second place Cyan Creepers taking on a strong Purple Pandas team, but they've been shocking everyone with their performance, and uh, while well, Antforest is becoming a bit of a hot tub streamer, he'll get out of there in a moment, I hope. And just like that, you can see that they have shocked the world. It's a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. And a snipe on Ren the Dog. Ant's doing very well, getting a kill on Illumina too. As well as False, false. Entry, that's three kills. 
Look at him go. Look at him go. He's just going to finish. Oh, he's going for the ace. He's going for the ace. Look at him. He wants this. He wants to prove that just because he's a first-time player doesn't mean he's bad. Look at that. And they win the round. Well done from Cyan. Ooh, first place. Okay, okay. Up next, we see the Red Rabbits versus the Blue Bats. Red has been on a bit of a losing streak since their flawless run was ended. But let's see if they can turn that around against the Blue Bats, who have been also, also been doing pretty well in Battle Box. I'm not gonna lie, the Blue Bats have surprised me. I didn't doubt their abilities, but they're doing pretty well for a team that has a new member. But if, if you look at the chat, that is just a com complete clean wipe of those Red Rabbits, as Blue just takes the points and the win. Jeez. And here we have the Cyan Creepers on their round 8 battle. As they're charging up, they get to the wall first. And it looks like Scott is just gonna sit and camp there and just fire arrows down at the enemy team. Boom! Takes out Kratzy. And wait for it, he's firing. Boom! Takes out Crinios. Aqua had quite a fall from grace after having such a strong start in Battle Box, really showing in this match as very f they got very few kills against Cyan. Cyan is just a dominant team. Look at them. They have taken first and they have taken it by a lot. Closing off round nine, we see the Blue Bats up against the Yellow Yaks, who have been underperforming this entire event. Quig first to the potion, but Punz gets some nice hits on him, scares him back. As Blue all reconvenes under CPK, who lands a nice damage pot on him. From the trees as well. Yellow is not going to go down without a fight. They struggled to find their footing in the first few rounds of Battle Box, but they're, they're here to fight all the way until the end. They're going to take out Blue. And they're gonna, they're gonna take this win. Look oh, at them go. Yeah. That was very dominant oh, from yeah. them. They're not oh, gonna give up. Yeah. CBK got some very nice kills on blue. Let's also take a look at the match of pink versus purple. Two very good teams going up against each other. Pink in second place. Let's see if purple can pull a match off of them. There's some kills going down there. Tapple takes care of Ren the dog, and they're firing down the middle. I'm not gonna lie. I'm colorblind, so both teams look the same to me. I'm just seeing a bloodbath. There goes in the Littlewood. What it's looking like is per pink is being more dominant than purple, getting more kills. They both seem to be chasing after Illumina. Because it looks like pink have solidified themselves into second place. Purple has dropped down to fifth, currently on the live leaderboard, but they want to come back and they want to at least take third. False, using this opportunity to place in the wool while pink isn't even looking and takes the final round against pink. Just like the last Jedi, the Cyan Creepers have subverted expectations and worked their way up into first place for Battle Box and the overall tournament. All right, we're going with the third decision dome. We're gonna figure out what the third game we're gonna be playing is. We're already two chickens in there. They're gonna waddle on over like, hello, I'm Mr. Chicken. Back, 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 back. You threw me into Sands of Time. I'm gonna walk on over to Ace Race because I don't care what you say. Oh, and down go the blue bats. More like the blue, uh, give me an aquatic based creature because they're in the water and that's what they do. All right. And purple is raining fire down on those chickens. They're like uh, going hunting. It's a good thing we got the uh, the Olympics going because they should be on the uh, the, the shooting team. So I don't know what the name of that. I think it's just called shooting, but that's what they got to do because taking out teams and what game has been chosen? Why don't we have a look and find out? It's Sky Battle. All right, starting off round one of Sky Battle with Illumina on the purple pandas. Fun fact: he's some of the best Sky Wars stats in the out of any contestant in MCC. So we should see a very solid performance out of him, and hopefully his team as well. Right away, he meets up with Wisp on the forward island to get the ranged weapons, and immediately kills him, holding off Cyan. And now we're switching over to Tapple and the pink parrots, who are off to a bit of a slower start, but they want to play this a little more strategically. They're going to bridge okay, over to the next right. island. They got Wilbur on the bridge. I'm not sure how smart of an idea that is. Uh, but I don't want to doubt them because they seem to know what they're doing. They're being led by Tapple and he is also a Sky Battle expert. So let's see how they go because they're... Oh, they've run into trouble over here. They've found Purple, who we were just watching. And battle ensues in the tower. Down goes Ren the dog. And oh, it's, all, it's going crazy now. Here comes Preston of the Blue Bats. Switch over to Antfrost on Cyan, who's watching that battle from behind. He goes in on blue to try and get some cheeky kills, but it does not work out as TNT is dropped. He does get to kill F Whip, though. And he turns around. He tries to fight Preston. Oh, it's not a success, though. But he Actually, tried. He was. tried. He got Preston he did low. He the kill on Preston in the it end was. of the day. 
Oh wow, he did. He hit him over the edge. And now we've got Captain Sparkles. They're also fighting. They're fighting Aqua. Down goes Kratzy, chopping up some cobwebs. He wants to run back and support his team who have taken the tower. Oh, but they're being held at bay by the Dream himself. The Nightmare, even, the way he plays. Bit evil. He's got a fishing rod. He wants that Captain Sparkles fish. He wants to hang it up on a wall. He wants to take a big photo holding the fish. He wants this, and he gets it using the rod. He's pulled him down, so Jack Manifold decides to go up, as he seems to be the last surviving member of a yellow team. But waiting for him is Sapnap and Quackity. Sapnap being such a deadly player throughout in PvP throughout this entire event, Sky Battle being no exception right now, as he sneaks up on Orange and gets two easy kills on them. He's making quick work of Orange over there. Oh, and now we're dealing with Fundy of the green team. They're a dominant team this round. Just a quick kill with a fishing rod there. TNT dropping from Connor's perspective. There they go for the win. Come on, can the green Garnies do it? They did it. They win the first round of Sky Battle. Finally seeing some action from the green team. All right, round two of Sky Battle. We're starting off with Pue Preston, my bad, and the blue bats as they are immediately off and bridging to the right. They want to get the chest here. They want to get the iron, but they've been ambushed by Cyan. There's Wisp jumping in. I see Ant Frost as well, and battle ensues. Preston runs out. He needs to grab some health, but he goes back in now. Takes out Wisp. Switching over to Ant Frost. He's also fighting. He takes out Quig, but then he burns to death himself. And then he... Oh, Preston goes down as well. We're going to take a quick rewind and then jump on over to the orange team now. Being led by Pizza Hut, they go to the Forward Island, which is also being head to by the Yellow Team, which is being led by Puns. Pete and Puns get into a fight. Pete gets a pretty easy kill on Puns, but then the rest of the Yellow Team comes in to support and starts to decimate the Orange Team. All right, we see Jack Manifold here. He needs to run away, but he's been shot off right in Captain Sparkles, and I believe that was Aqua who was doing it. Has now this becomes a three-team battle. Orange is up here on the mid-tier island between their spawn island and the middle, and they've been battling. Shovel's trying to get some fights in there. Oh, here comes Orange, but turn around. Here, knock, knock. Who is it? It's CPK and the yellow team here to clean up shop and wipe out everyone. Fast forward to Joel, who sneaks up behind the Hermits on the purple team and gets two easy Void kills. But behind him is Martin, who tries to avenge the Hermits. Joel does not want this fight, tries to run away. But it is he is not fast enough, as Martin does get the kill. Ooh, that's a shame. Now we're going to jump over to Red. This is Dream chasing down CPK. CPK is going to get away because we run into Pink. So instead, Dream decides, I'm going to back up a little bit, come over here, get a few kills on the rest of Purple, and completely wipe them out. There goes Illumina, Satnap and Dream double-teaming Illumina. That is an intense battle. And now we're going to take it up to Pink. Look at that, Tapple's pushing some creepers over. I think that's Red down there that they're raining down fire on. Wilbur's going to move over to the rest of his team. He's got some TNT, and he's got a sneaky strategy up his sleeve. Drop it down. And what's going to happen next, Lucario? Wilbur gets the kill on Dream, and then we're going to cut over to Fruitberries, the machine himself, who is down at the bottom cleaning up the rest of Green Team. Kills Connor. He's going to go and next. He's probably going to try and get a kill on who's down there. That is Filza. He gets the kill on him. It is just him and Pink Team left, but will he be able to take on the rest of them? I don't think so. He's holding on to the middle. Tapple's going to hit him, going to fight, and the border kills him, I think. No, it was Tapple. Just like that, Pink wins. All right, and our final round of Sky Battle is here. We're going to start out with the blue team again, but this time it's Quig, who's up and moving right away with the bridge. He's going speed bridging style. He should be in the X-Men, Mr. Quicksilver over here. Immediately meets the face of False Symmetry and Illumina, and more battles ensuing. Look at that. Their swords swinging, lava being placed. They are chasing back to their own island. Potions are being thrown. Illumina goes into the void, and he decides to loot some, some bows in the chest there. He takes out in the little wood as well. It seems that Blue's being a lot more dominant. They're holding off this island here as they're fighting, and they're just keeping Purple at bay. Some boots are being crafted. It's always good to have some nice-looking shoes. And now we're going to jump over to Orange Team, who seem to be down a member because I can't seem to find Pete anywhere. Don't worry, we got Shovel and we got Pearlescent Moon. They're coming over to the island. Here comes Green. Oh, no! Green's been shot off. Oh, the horror. They've made it to the next island. But, oh, okay, here we go. Sticking together is what teammates need to do. They climb up the tower. Nope, scary over there. They turn around. There's more frightening there. It's Dream. No one wants to take on Dream, but the two of them are going to do it. They're sword swinging. They're fighting. Oh, no, Pearlescent Moon goes over the edge. And in comes Sapnap. No, it was Michael. Sapnap running into mid goes over to clean up a fight that's happening between uh, Purple and Aqua. Gets the kill on False and gets the kill on Crinios. And then he goes back to watch Dream get a kill. 
They're shooting a lot down there. Oh, someone fell into the void. Was that the dream kill? I think it was. Yeah, there goes Wisp. He's been hit down. Red is sticking together like a tight knit unit. Look at them. This is what formation is. This is working as a team. And they're going to go up together, it would seem. They're looking up. There's teams above them. Dream is hungry for blood. He is running around. Look at the chat there. That is... Who is it? Yellow taking out Lime. Oh, I said they were blown up. There was a TNT kill there. And up again. Here we go. Now we got red and blue fighting in the battle. If you just look at the chat, there is too many deaths for me to keep up with. Battle, lava, TNT, swords, everything you could ever want from a round of sky battle is happening right this second. Oh no, no, down goes Sapnap. Tubbo, meanwhile, is fishing. Five up, more like five up, up and away as he gets taken with a fishing rod kill. And he, look at pink sticking together. They're seeing blue. Ah, blue is gone now. Quig was the final member and he is down. As you see, Pink is just bridging over mid, trying to escape that border. Tapple gets a kill on Filza. You're eliminating the green guardians. Almost no competition left for them as they're the full, only full team alive. Look across the bridge and see yellow bridging across. Not many people left at this point. Oh, down. Oh, Tubbo's been pulled down, but we're going to jump perspectives over to Fruit Berries, who's also down on the bottom island. He's building up and takes quick care of the B-Man himself, and he decides, hey, you know what? I want to be part of this fight, and up he goes. We're going to switch perspective one more time. Hello there. Fruit Berries is here like Obi-Wan Kenobi, but he is ended just as soon as he arrives. Down he goes. That was a kill from Tapple, and there's more fighting. This is it. We're about to end the round. Game over, and Pink have won again. It was a close one. If Pons had managed to hang on for a few more seconds, he could have taken the round. But alas, Pink emerges victorious as Tapple leads the way, winning two out of the three rounds. Pink is definitely stepping it up this MCC, and we will definitely be keeping an eye on them in the upcoming games. All right, here we go. Voting for the last game of the first half of the event. Not that it is split into two. Oh, and before I could even get words out of my mouth, Green has taken down the pink parrots. That is Tommy in it, taken down Tubbo's team. There was a rivalry there. Evil face from Fundy, and look at that. That was, oh my god, it was Phil's of Minecraft. The man may be old and retired, but he's got quite an arm on him to dunk them in such a way. And look at all the chickens flying down. They're all huddled together in that one over there, and there's just a little bit of banter in the chat. But here comes Kara Corvus with the Mega Lime Chicken over in a different game. That's Saints of Time they want. Hole in the Wall had a few chickens, but the Mega Chicken might actually win it for them. That is one big chicken. I would love to take a photo with him. He seems like a character at an amusement park, almost. I think, yes it is, it's Sands of Time that has been chosen. Here we go. Sands of Time. We're doing the final countdown as we get prepared. We're starting with Fruit Berries on the Lime Llamas. And as you can see, it's a very new map, been upgraded. There's a lot of puzzles now, I believe. And Fruit Berries is off. He immediately picks up an iron sword, works his way underneath the sand tower, and immediately finds the blue key, which I believe is in that same location for everyone. What do you think, Lucario? Uh, yes, that is true. It is always in that location. Another vault thing that is always just in the same spot every time is the green vault, which is always immediately off of spawn. Ooh, oh, that's pretty close then. And speed of green, looks like Tapple here has just found the green key. And he didn't actually have to travel very far. And now we're going to cut to Rembo, who's fighting spiders, who's in a room. I believe this is the room that you were just talking about that is just off spawn, because I believe if he goes up, he should find... Just wait with me for a second here. Yeah, there it is. There's the green vault. Now the two of them can meet up and open that vault for a lot of money. Pink immediately finding the first vault. It's definitely going to shoot them forward. Also intimidate the other teams, because this message is broadcasted in chat. So Re Tapple's just got to get the key over to Rambu, and boom, a bunch of points for Pink Parrots. I like that, the ability to, to ta almost taunt on your other opponents, like, look at us, we've just found a vault, we've got all that money, it's just going to try and motivate the other teams to work harder and catch up, look at that, look at all the money he's picking Let's up. Let's over to Ali, um, Orion Sound, who is using his big brain to solve one of the new and in just recently introduced word puzzles, to be the first team to get access to the red vault key. If his team finds the red vault, that will be very good for them in the future. It's also cut over to Fundy, who seems to be taking on one of the challenge pits full of zombie spawners and lots of gold. He immediately goes for all of the gold. Does not seem to be paying any attention to the zombies, though, just lighting up the spawners. Could be detrimental to him, because he will have to face all of them at some point. He's not breaking the spawners either, which does give gold. Rather, taking on all of the zombies at once, which may not be the best move, as he just got cornered by the zombies. This could be the death of Fundy. And it is losing his team the majority of his coins. Nah, not my favorite episode of The Walking Dead, not gonna lie. But back again with another green vault being opened, this time by the uh, the Quackster, Quackity. He's got his game face on. 
And now a quick jump over to Crinius. What's he doing with the Aqua Axolotls? He's doing some hippity hoppity parkour, climbing up a ladder, getting some gold, and he's like, all right, time to head out. Jump. Okay, he's a big jump, and he made it. Oh, no, he didn't make it into the lava. He goes. Oh, no. Disaster. He just lost the blue vault key and half his team's coins. Jumping over to Puns on the Yellow Yaks, who is uh, hot on the trails of the Red Vault. He had just gotten the Red Vault key, so now he's just looking for the vault itself to give his team a very nice coin bonus. He found a room with a bunch of Blazes. He's probably going to have to fight them off if he wants to make it there, because Blazes can be very problematic with all of the fire damage that they deal. Although he seems to be doing well with them. He tries to healing potion them. That's the wrong mob. It'll, healing pots only damage undead monsters like zombies and skeletons. But he does find the red vault. And having the key, this will be very good for his team. Getting a very nice coin bonus and bringing them up higher into the standings, which we cannot see yet. Now he's just been taking a bit of a bit of a toast there. He's just been lit on fire by one of the blazers. They're turning him into a pun small, but it doesn't matter. That's not going to stop him as he goes and collects all that gold. Look at yellow team flooding it. Now over with Preston. Preston, this is his first time playing Sands of Time, so let's hope he can figure it out pretty quickly. I hope he's a quick learner because he's a bit struggling. He thinks there was some crack stone there. No, it was just the design. But he jumps into a little pit, wants to break the spawner for that gold, but he's a bit swarmed. There's a pillager and there's a group of zombies. Actually, I think there's a second pillager. Oh, he is pinned down. This is not looking good for Preston. Can he get out? Oh, no, it's all over for him. And he dies. He lost 128 coins uh, in the chat there. But don't worry, he's going back again. He needs to redeem, get those coins going for his team. So he's trying to find the way back to where he was going. But yeah, it obviously seems to be this way through the tunnel. And his teammates are doing pretty well. Their team's got 1,600 coins. That's pretty good right now compared to other teams. And he's going to try and jump down, get the coins back. And it's, ooh, it's not going so well. He's already taken half his health. Oh, no. The pillagers have just got him playing ping pong again. They're shooting him between. The zombies have overrun. And Preston dies a second time. Very detrimental for his team. It's going to cost him multiple sand. Lots of time that could have been spent exploring other maps. But now let's take a jump over to Sapnap who has been exploring a vault and he finds the golden key. This is supposedly the best vault that you can get, but it's very hard to get as it's chain parkour over lava. Very hard to do, even for top players. So Sapnap decides to take the safe route and pass on this opportunity. Very safe, he gets to keep all of his coins and live to fight another day. As he goes down to the pillager room that we've seen take out Preston and Pearlescent Moon, will it claim Sapnap as well? Yes, it will, as he damage pots himself unable to take out the pillagers. All right, here we are with Illumina now, working with the purple pandas. He's just walking his way, opens a little gate room. Oh, and he's found a new room. Here we go, okay, pillagers and blazers. So far, these two have been the worst mobs, and they continue their reign of terror as they team up on Illumina and kill him. Shovel now, she's on the orange ocelots. It seems that the, the downer member, Pete, is having some technical difficulties. They've got a minute left as she's looking at the counter, and they're freaking out, but they've got to try and do what they can before the time starts counting down and traps them in there. Yeah, it's not looking good for the Orange Ostlatch, especially play a player down. This is arguably the worst game you could have it because you need everyone to there just getting sand, getting the coins. So I don't know if they'll be able to make it out in time or if they will all be trapped inside the temple. This is very bad for the team who's already had a rough start with Pizza Hut's internet. You hear that? What do I hear? Oh no, I can hear it counting down. This isn't good for the Orange Ostlatch. They got a bank before they can... No. They didn't get out in time. In. With only one key, no coins, no vault. Taking a look at Aqua, who hasn't really recovered since Crinios' first death in the lava. They're only at 700 coins, which isn't that good. They're gonna cut their losses and get out while they can. A better option than getting locked in there with no coins at all. Not the best run from them. They only found one key, which they lost to lava. But at least they made it out alive. And here we are with fruit berries with Lima. He is slaying those zombies and pillagers like there's no tomorrow. He's quite, quite, quite the PvP god we have seen. And what do they got? They got 2,000 coins going for their team, which is pretty good. Uh, it's obviously better than the team we just saw. He finds the golden vault, but no golden key. All right, only uh, we saw Sapnap find the gold key, but he didn't even attempt to go for it. But uh, that means they can't be able to open it. Now here we are within the little wood on the purple pandas. He's trying to jump around. Oh, he's been hit by a zombie. He's working on his thing. So, in Littlewood is the first to find the blue vault key. It is pretty late in the game, and nobody else has even come close to finding it yet. So, that might be the only blue vault we see, even though almost everyone has the key. Let's jump on over to Tom Yinnit on the Green Guardians. He's carrying a lot of the coins for his team. But if you listen, the time is starting to run out, and he is very deep into the dungeon right now. 
He deposits some of his sand to open up a dungeon. That's one of the new mechanics that was just introduced into the revamped Sands of Time, this MCC. It's nice to see him using it, but it is very risky him being out there so late. It's going to be very hard for him to get in if it's possible at all. It's not looking good for him right now. Lockie, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this? Oh, it's it's bad news bears. Bad news are being bared. Look at Filza. He's like, I, I'm out of here. He is just leaving this team behind. Connor has struggled a bit with this sand and green team are in shambles. All right. Tommy is panicking. He is not going to be able to make it back in time. Fundy looking for any lost sand. No, he says they're bailing. Connor, come with me. We got to get out. We got to save any coins that we can. Tommy is upset. He's left behind carrying majority of the coins, but it's not. He gets locked in. 900 coins, one key, no vaults. Not very good for them. Let's take a look at Pink. As we can see, Rambo is also pretty deep in the dungeon. He's got a bit more time than Tommy, though. This is a lot of zombies. Lahi, do you think he's going to make oh, it out no, of this? Oh, there's a creeper. It's not looking good. Look at this. He's trapping himself in. He's dropped his sword. Man, how clumsy can you get when you're being attacked by a horde of zombies? Oh my god, look at him. He is, oh my god, he's freaking out. He's got a lot of zombies coming in. There is so many. Oh, he's trapped himself in a dead end now. It is, uh, it's the end of Rambu. The rest of the pink team wants to get out, but Rambu, oh wait, he's fighting back. He was on half a heart. He can do it. He's doing it. He did it. He manages to kill all the zombies. It's now time to go. He has to move, catch up to his team. He wants to take a turn, which is the way, right way out. He can't remember. It's a called a labyrinth for a reason, but he can't seem to figure it out. He's turning left and right, and he keeps running into things. He sees his team through the wall using the glowing potion, but it's just, come on, Rambu. He's got to run. He's feeling a lot hyped up after that. I assume his energy levels are through the roof after managing to pull off what is one of the best clutches I've seen in Sands of Time. There's another zombie, but that is no longer a problem with him. He once took out, just as we saw, a hundred zombies at once. This is nothing. Rambu is undefeatable. Look at him. Creeper, don't worry about it, Creeper. It can blow up. He doesn't care. He's working his way through. He remembers now, sees the team, and it's time to get the heck out of there. Tubbo, I hear Tubbo yelling in the background. They're running out of time as well, but they want to get out there. They have a lot more coins. 2,600 coins is a lot more than green. They did really well, and it looks like they're all going to make it out of there safely. Fantastic job getting two of the vaults, 2,700 coins, a very solid exit for them. All right, CPK with the yellow yaks. He's in a very dark place. I guess it is a dark and scary dungeon, really, because I cannot see a single thing that's going on. I saw him break a spawner, and he is trapped. He's lost. He's just as lost as I am. I bet he can't see what's going on either. How many coins have they got? They got 2,400. That's a good amount of coins, but I think that they are now also running out of time. You can see Captain Sparkles, Jack Manifold, and Puns have all banked and left, and CPK seems to be left behind as the time is running out. There's no one there to even add more sand, so he has got a limited time to make his way out, but if you listen... You can hear the countdown. He's, he's not going to make it out. He runs through a horde of zombies, and it's just... Ooh. I think they still banked 1,800 coins, which is still a good amount of coins to get out with. It is more than most of the other teams. They got two vaults, so that's good as well. Let's jump on over to the Red Rabbits. Quackity going out into this dungeon to get some final few coins. He has the Red Vault key. He's going to be trying to find the Red Vault. Let's see if he can get it in time before the time runs out. We are nearing the end of the game for almost every single team. So it's going to be quite a time crunch to see if he can get all of these last few coins. It'll be very good for his team, shooting them up to a much higher spot. They're already doing well for themselves at 2,000 coins. But it could be even better because Quackity does find the red vault. Parkour is over the lava, over to the vault to get him to get himself around 300 more coins. 1,000 coins personally at 2,300 right now. Now all he's got to do is make it back and get out in time. He's got a little dance with a blaze over here. He's going to try and escape. He's trying to juke him <laughs> out. Taking a little bit. Gets a sand and then jumps right past the blaze. Going right back to the entrance. Get a thousand coins for his team. Very good job from Quackity for the Red Rabbits. Locky, yeah. any thoughts on the Rabbits? Yeah, well, the Rabbits, they are, they, they want to get out because they are running out of time. Dream, I think, he, I think I overheard him say he's going to try and look for a bit of sand. Yeah, here he is right now. He's looking for sand. And uh, Quackity, they're just trying to find as much time as they can for Quackity to get out. He is just running his way back. Quackity seems to be calm in the face of what looks like terror. He's made it back, no problems. The rest of his team is panicking. They didn't know where he is. Confused, now they're all turning. They got 2,700 coins. That's a really good amount compared to the other teams we've seen so far. And they've all banked it. They made it out well. Look at that. Three keys, two volts, 2,700 coins. Very good job from Quackity there. Let's jump over to the Lime Llamas, who are doing pretty well for themselves at 2,300 coins. But everyone in Lime seems to be struggling, except for the Sandkeeper, Kara. They don't think they don't seem to be able to actually get out of the dungeon. Kara, warning up, there's only 15 seconds. There's almost no time left for Lime to actually get out. Almost everyone's going to be stuck in there, getting left with only Kara's 500 coins from the sand. This is a very big hit to the team. It's not good that they lost almost all of their coins. They did not open a single vault, and Kara left with only 500 coins. 
Oh, that was very that was very sad. But here we go. Scott's major, the mastermind of the teams himself. He's putting in some of that sand because look at them, Cyan's all coming together. They got 2,700 coins, also a decent amount of coins. So for teams are now rounding, near, they're nearing 3,000 total coins, and they're all getting out, and they've banked it. Look at that, once again, same three keys, same two vaults. Let's jump over to the blue bats who, after Preston dying, did very well for themselves. They're at 3,100 coins, the highest we've seen so far. Everyone seems very able to make it out right now. A very good job from all of them. Joel banking 1,000 coins as he heads out, followed by Preston with 800. And then F Whip and Quig leave to get 3,100 coins. A very good performance from the blue bats. And here we go, final team, the Purple Pandas working their way out. They have smashed it, look at that, 3,294 coins. Everyone's banking it, they're getting out there safely, and I think they're going to be our winners. Oh, look at that, 3,294, all three keys other than gold, and all three vaults as well with them. And it looks like first overall by a very close margin, they've just narrowed out the Blue Bats to take this game. All right, four games down, four to go. Pink Parrots lead the way, followed by Red and Blue. With half the event still to come, it's anyone's game, so don't count out anyone just yet. Things are only going to ramp up from here, but we're still with a few questions. Will Pink keep their momentum and finish Rambu's debut tournament in first? Are Cyan, Yellow, or Green even going to catch up in the second half? Can the Red Rabbits finally get to dodgeball and earn the first win for this color? Find out in part two, which is coming soon, unless you're watching us late, which in that case, you can click on the screen and see.